I remember he had a fucking, he had a huge hog and being like, whoa, yeah, like dad dick, you know? <laughs> dad dick? Oh, yeah. Dad dicks are big. <laughs> Rachel's hyperventilating. I don't like this at all. <laughs> Come on, let's call. Let's call. I'm going to shit my pants. Uh, are you really going to poop your pants I'm not right going to poop my pants. I'm just like... Okay, the Andrew socks. Wait, I'm going to text them. Don't text him. I'm texting him. What are you saying to him? I told you I was going to send a naked picture of me. I don't need Michael flirting with my dad this openly. Because my dad is so into Michael. Huh. Find my, out my what was going on My defense is that you guys us. fucking you, live you, together. You, you, you. And now you guys oh. are emotionally oh, attacking me Jesus with this Christ. stranger from the East Coast. <laughs> And I do I feel like <laughs> Baby you're free to be into what you're into Baby you're free to let in who you want in you Baby you're free Sit the zombie To the Sunday morning orgy. Woo, woo. Welcome, everyone. I love the birds chirping. Your number one resource for all <laughs> things Rachel, oh. Michael, and Andrew. Yay! Hell yeah. It's true. Hello, everyone. I'm your host, Michael Guggenheim. I'm here with my co-hosts, Rachel Sacera. Good evening. And Andrew Thomas. What's up, everybody? Oh, wow. We just want to let you know that you have stumbled upon the greatest resource to your sexuality. The most important podcast that you'll ever listen to. And the greatest resource since you stumbled upon that butt plug collection in your parents' bedroom drawer. Dresser drawer. Very specific. This is the most important moment of your life. Am I the only one who, when I was a kid, found my parents' sex toys out of the three of us? I, I, I didn't. I did not. Oh, really? Yeah. My parents were... It's no Your parents are freaks. surprise that Your I'm, mom and dad fuck. Oh, for sure. It's no surprise that I'm a, a little wild boy because... I mean, I'll tell you, I was probably like middle school, maybe, and found like butt plugs, all different How did you... Did you know they vibe. were butt... But, oh, huh, did, you yeah, just saw this and you were like, mm, this is a good butt plug. Well, I didn't think like, oh, like this is a key to something. <laughs> it's like a top. <laughs> well, like, what, yeah, what could you have thought I that it was? I would have spun it like one of those... Uh, yeah, one like of those a dreidel. old tops. Well, you turn it on and it's like... <laughs> <"What a dreidel?" laughs> that's a, that sounds like not a good bubble. You come home and you're, and you're like, oh, mom, this is such a small massager. You're just like, rubbing it on your neck. Is this for your under eye circles? What do you use this for? I can't even reach my back with this. <laughs> they also had a, 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 v, a videotape, like a VHS <gasps> tape. And thank God it wasn't them fucking. I, I thought you were going to say just casually. Not- well, because it could have been, right? It absolutely could have been. But What was it? But it was like recorded porn back when you could. I mean, I don't know if they had recorded it off of a thing they bought on pay-per-view or if it was. Imagine how much effort went into that. It's so much kinkier back then than it is to now. To like set your to like record timer to porn. make sure that you get the right porn. Yes. And I, like, dude, I, it was crazy. I was in sixth grade. I remember this very distinctly. There was a girl that I had a crush on for like most of elementary school. Her name was Vicky Zanoni. I'm just going to shout her out. Full name. Shout out Vicky. I don't give a fuck. Zanoni. I love that name. I don't give a fuck. Everyone everyone Michael grew up with had the coolest fucking names. If people don't know, I'm from New Jersey. Michael's from Jersey. And there's a lot of little Italian girls that I had big crushes on. In fact, I think my first several crushes were all Italians. There was Amanda Canavera when I was in the first grade. But then by second grade or third grade, I moved on to Vicky Zanoni. She was like the girl. Did you have a girl like this, Rachel, who you grew up with, who a lot of the other girls liked and would hang out with, but the parents would hate this girl because they knew she was... She was going to be a huge slut. Huge whore. Like, she was the type of girl, she always, like, was sitting around with her legs splayed wide open and all this stuff. Oh, shit. And Hold on. Is this me? 
<laughs> it, well, were you the whore in the group? I don't think so. No. Do you know who the whore was? Yeah. Oh, okay, so it wasn't you. It wasn't me. It okay. wasn't me. No, I was going to say, if you don't know who it was, it was probably <laughs> you. But I did sit, I like still sit with my legs Well, I mean, don't get us wrong. You're a huge whore, but. But I'm not the whore of the group. You weren't the, it's like, you know, she, her man, she wasn't like as mannered. Mm. It was the whole package. And this was the girl. I mean, no surprise, really. This was the girl that really got things going for me. <laughs> early, early on, right? I mean, it, it, it was a big deal. And I had a huge crush on her for a long time. But this is all comes full circles. I was in sixth grade. And I had found this porn tape. And I remember, and so there was like a short window in sixth grade where I would be home before my parents, oh, right? Those were sweet times. <laughs> and and my sister, I think she might have been playing sports after school or something. And or I don't know, because I also played sports. So, I, But I just remember there was some window where like I was alone at home and I maybe had 45 minutes. And I remember like, you know, doing the whole thing. You have to like sneakily go into your parents' room, right? And you get the tape. And then you go out and you go, I would go into the living room so that I'd be close enough to hear the garage door, you know, and I would make sure like all the other doors in the house were locked. So oh they couldn't God. like come in. It was such in. a ritual of like <laughs> yeah. securing the area. And, and fully the excitement of that. I think that was part of the titillation too, was the like, oh, I'm going to get caught, you know, and all this stuff. And I remember like putting it in and those images were so burned in to my head. You know, there was like a woman being fucked on a pool table. That was really distinct. And this was back in the day when all the porn that you could get had plots and had some semblance of being a real movie. <laughs> and so there was scenes where it was just the main lead guy like taking a shower and shit. I remember he had a fucking, he had a huge cock. And being like, whoa, yeah, like dad dick, you know. <laughs> dad dick? Oh, yeah. Dad dicks are big. But that's another thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so back to your mom's butt plugs. Well, hold on. We don't know who. You asked me. Wait. I Sorry, mean, just first of all, we don't know whose butt plugs they were. I just think they were your mom's. I, I'm not saying they couldn't be your dad's, but your mom seems like she'd be super into butt plugs. Jesus Christ. <laughs> it sounds a lot wilder coming from you. Than <laughs> there, than Is there a chance they were just Christmas presents that they were hiding? Absolutely not. For who? You. <laughs> They would never buy Michael Bublé. This, Bublugs. this is that. I don't like any of that. I'm excited. It, for, it really grosses me out. I'm actually. excited. It's to, so. <laughs> it's. I have no problem with the idea. It's like, yeah, my parents are sexual people. They have their own sexual life. But it's like, don't you know, put it on me. Make it like an incest thing is really disgusting. It's but anyway, so, incest necessarily. Yeah, just, maybe they support <laughs> your sexual journey. Ugh, that would be so. Uh, it's be really so terrible. horrifying. It's really horrifying what you guys are saying. <laughs> it's be so terrible. I don't like it at all. Yeah, it's disgusting. I'm I upset. Found at my parents' house, not sex toys, but I found my mom is a nurse, so she had a bunch of medical books with a ton yeah. of naked people. And when I was a little kid, I was like, dude, all I was always him. sneaking to the basement and like uh -huh. finding the 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 titties, dude. I remember there was a woman in one of these like. Things and they were like doing all sorts of exams on her. She was hot and had big old bazongas. Big bazans. I'm not surprised by that. It's probably pretty formative for you. And I also had that, like where my mom had some book called like Learn About Your Body or You're a Woman and He's a Man. And and then like it has like little drawings yeah. or whatever. And just you have like, a PC. <laughs> 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 just like looking at those drawings. Just, like, look at these drawings. Mm. I mean, look, probably the younger generations who are listening to this will not be able to relate at all because basically since they were six years old, they fucking had iPhones and were watching Pornhub. But for those of <laughs> us so of a later <laughs> generation, in order for us to go on a computer, it was the family computer. Right. First oh my of God, all. the stress of getting that computer open and fucking it's it's not the before that's stressful it's the after did i properly wipe the memory and you know you know we didn't you didn't <laughs> because you didn't even know how to erase i was the like history. delete cookies delete all history i got burned on that so many times well the other thing is that like you know now pr kids probably know what all the big porn sites are and stuff back then it was just like we were just I, googling I sex.com <laughs> like <that's> <laughs> how many viruses did we get on our like i dude when those I other windows start opening up and you're like, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. 
Oh, oh I have a distinct memory because I remember in the time of Napster and then there was a LimeWire and Kazaa. Yeah, LimeWire was big. Which, if you don't know, they were peer-to-peer file sharing platforms where people essentially people would like share stuff illegally like mp3s and song you know to share music and stuff but then they started change the platforms and make it so you could share movies and pictures and stuff so we were getting a lot of porn that way when we were kids and i remember i accidentally left a search open and i'm not sure that my mom understood the search was a search right mm. because of the way that like when you search it just came up with all these listings that were in text yeah. So I don't know if she thought they were all files or something, but she took me into the guest bedroom where we had the this computer. And oh, you had it in a bedroom? Well, so that's lucky. That but that Did was you shut the door. We had ours like Hold in on. a garage no, outside. But that, that was later, right? <laughs> like when we were young, it was that there it was in my dad's office, there was a computer. But then <laughs> but then once he got a new computer, the old computer went up into the guest bedroom. For porn. The porn computer. Well, that's what I used it for, for sure. Uh, among Maybe that's a, why he bought a new computer. Among other like, things. I Gotta know get Michael's going to I hate this. Porn. I hate this. You guys, well, what are you talking about? No, I, I, of course not. Of course, this is <laughs> ridiculous. I, I, stop suggesting that my parents <laughs> are like trying to be connected in my sex life. It, that is not true at all. You don't and, think and they frankly, knew that you were on. jerking off? No, I didn't say that. Maybe he just That's not the same thing. And no, they weren't trying to provide me with a. In fact, if you just listen to this story, you would know that. <laughs> I'm not saying that they if provided. You just, you. <laughs> if you just listen to the story, you would know. So anyway, so my mom, so my mom like sees this search thing on the computer or something. She brings me in and sits me down oh next God. to her and is like, "What is this? Uh, teen Sarah." Uh, takes deep dick and asshole. <laughs> and I, I don't remember what the fuck, but it was just, she read out three or four of the fucking, <laughs> of the, like the titles. <laughs> it's like fucking blonde bimbo gets stuck in Eiffel Towered air. by, you know, big black cock or something. I remember her saying it to me and being all upset, like on the verge of tears. <laughs> So, no, they weren't especially supportive of middle school Michael. I'm not saying they were whatever. supportive. I'm saying that your dad didn't want you doing that on his work computer. You told me, you trying to suggest that my parents like bought me d- d- fucking butt plugs for Christmas or something. What do you call that? I mean, that's no, that's like a reason they, to call fucking maybe they the child they protective cops. services. They thought they were cops. My parents no. never said anything. They never knew or they never said anything i don't know which one but i would like stay let's up late him. no let's call him. i no. have your dad's number no <laughs> let's call him. should i text them no can i text them right now no don't text him right i just text rachel him and just say did yeah did did you know that rachel was looking at porn when don't she was a don't make kid? him answer that over t- he's gonna be so confused and scared why just don't does he not know about the podcast no he doesn't know about the podcast but what about the socks you're not going to get him a pair of those socks with your face on it? <laughs> okay, so for people who don't know... We have socks. We have merch. We have merch. We have merch, you motherfuckers. We're merched up. So- and can I say something else before we get into this whole... Oh, like, First of all, can one of you pull up the link to the merch so that and then read it. the URL? But, but here's the thing, people. So I know this is the fourth episode, but we released the first episode last week. And we only got two listener ma- like letters, like emails. What the fuck is wrong with you people? It's bullshit. Every episode, we have been asking for you guys to write in. Please, write in. We want to talk about your problems. We want to judge you. Is yes. that so much to ask? Let us do it. Okay, moving on. We we have socks. We have socks that you can buy. And they're not that expensive. They're only like 15 or 16 bucks. $15.99. $15.99, people. Beautiful, beautifully designed socks. So yeah, what Rachel, what's the URL? Teespring.com slash stores. Slash Sunday dash morning dash orgy dash store. Okay, well, you're not going to remember that, obviously. That was a retarded thing for Rachel to suggest <laughs> wow. that you wow. write that down. I didn't suggest that. You you made me do it. <laughs> you can just go to our Instagram. No, I'm saying go, go, to our, go, to our, go to one of our social channels yeah. or our link tree. We've got yeah. a link tree. It's really easy. What the, is, what the is link that? The link tree is on the Instagram. So if you just go to the what's Instagram the, What's the click, link tree URL? Oh, man, I don't know. What, I, how, why do we even have you? Why do you have a title? All right. <laughs> link T. Sorry, no, no. Link T. Oh, just she's fired. Dot e. Right, please write in if you would like us to kick Rachel off the show. Please write in. 
We're happy to accommodate. Sunday morning if five, Hold on. If five people write in and say, uh, she's out. Oh my out, God. They're, I'm going to get kicked Or if we up. sell 100 pairs of socks in the next two weeks, Rachel's You're gonna gone. You're going to She's me gone. Off. We she's sell gone. it. Yo, I love that even better. 100 <laughs> pairs of socks. All, only 100 pairs. We hit way more than 100 That's views like in couples, total. Assuming that every couple is only two people. Okay, whatever. What? You know? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> oh, oh, He's like, oh, oh, he doesn't want to exclude thruples and... And all that. Do you think it could be like 25? Couple? No, but a couple is always two. Do you want to hear what Michael oh, okay. wrote about all the socks? I do, because I wrote it. <laughs> I do. I haven't heard it. All right. Uh, for the, you let's can start, get socks Let's start with, with Michael. Yeah, let's yeah. start with Michael. You can get socks Andrew. with each of our faces on them. But, but, They're but, hilarious. But to be clear, it's like, it's you can choose the person you like the best. In fact, this is what I would really oh, like no, you to do. no. It's going to be like, no one's going to buy mine. <laughs> no one's buying if people, No one's uh, buying my socks. If you I guys... See, I already know. We should make a pair of socks with the link tree URL on them <laughs> and then fire Rachel. <laughs> and just give them to Rachel so that she'll know <laughs> so from now I on. Have the URL. You have to get it tattooed. I'll do it. Um, you think I fucking won't? I will. You get our link tree tattoo. I'll get the link tree tattoo. You're a, you're a disgusting person. <laughs> I have worse tattoos. Get the socks barcode. Oh God, <laughs> I can't. Sometimes I don't. I can't believe we let such white trash fill <laughs> onto our podcast. We, so, we didn't t- explain what the socks are, and Rachel's doing a terrible job. So let me fill. Well, in. I would say hold I was, on. I, I was gotta definitely mansplain doing it. And let then, me mansplain it. All right, please help me. Uh, help me. Well, I also made the fucking socks. What did you do to contribute to the socks? Were you here? Were you here? in Los Angeles I had the face participating that I, oh hold on God. let me just ask you were you here participating when when Andrew and I came up with the idea to do the socks I was not but okay, I was okay so that's it so so let me explain the socks wait let me give you a mansplain intro thank you <laughs> well wait can you wait Rachel can you do a part of that uh, intro where you like as a woman are saying like I don't understand yeah oh we'll just use that actually <laughs> <laughs> Mansplain. I don't understand. <laughs> Shut up, Rachel. <laughs> okay, wait. So, so anyway, yeah, we 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 have two different styles of socks. Uh, you can either get crew socks or sort of like soft fabric socks. For those of you who don't understand what that means, the crew socks are like wife beater, and the other socks are like church socks. Yeah, so we have what? we basically cover that all made it bases. More difficult for me Rachel, to understand. You are a redneck who doesn't even wear shoes or socks. I have shoes and socks on right now. You have no say in this. I'm gonna post pictures of Hold my on. feet with Just, socks and shoes on them. I knew she was gonna do this. We know you're launching an OnlyFans, <laughs> but we told you you couldn't promote it on the podcast. <laughs> This is family friendly. Oh, it is. Okay, so yeah, we, there's two styles, but we have three different designs. There's like a Michael sock, there's a Andrew sock, and there's a Rachel sock. So what I think is fair is that if Rachel has the least number of socks sold by our next episode, then she gets kicked off the podcast. But you guys can save her by buying socks. Yeah. This is terrible. Yeah. I really have been having fun doing the podcast, though. I mean, it's not up to us anymore. Here. You heard it here. Yeah, it's not. If up to you us. like Rachel and Wonders down the podcast, like you have to buy more socks now. If you think it would be funny for us to kick Rachel off the podcast, then buy our socks. Buy Andrew or Michael socks. <laughs> All right. So okay, moving on. The Michael socks. Here's what Michael <laughs> had oh, to yeah, say yeah, about his own. <laughs> We're still talking about socks. <laughs> this is, just this a is a long, about our socks. long. <laughs> Segment. <laughs> I didn't even off. finish my story about Vicky Zanoni. Okay. It doesn't matter. We'll come back to it. Socks are more important. So, We're Michael Socks. We're coming back to that story. You won't remember. And you're going to look to me. socks already. All right. So, uh, we got our Michael Socks. Beautiful blue Michael Socks. Michael, okay. The official socks of the Sunday morning orgy crew. Michael wears a fresh pair of these stylish dog slippers every day of the week. That's it. That's the Michael description. It's good. It's simple. Do you like dog slippers? Dog slippers. <laughs> That's because right. people from the South call their feet dogs, and I like it. What? Yeah. yeah they say, my dogs are barking. But it's I've the way you're saying that. it is interesting. You've you never like, heard my dogs are barking? No, I've never My dogs heard that are barking. I've been reading this book called Pimp by Iceberg Slim, and he's a pimp from the South originally. And so a lot of his lingo, a lot of his slang is Southern slang, which I only Where know because from? of the— Either Georgia or Alabama, I thought. Yeah, that sounds like like a Georgia or Alabama thing. <laughs> type thing. My dogs are barking. Like either they're like the Atlanta area or like. Uh, so my dogs are barking is like if your feet are tired from walking around yeah, all I heard, day. That was a phrase where I where I'm from. My dogs are barking. Yeah. Well, for you especially because you didn't even have shoes where you were growing up. Untrue. What do you call people from Oregon? Is it Oregonian? Yeah. Did you have an orgasm while you were there? While you were home? 
many. Did your parents help? No! <laughs> Do you see how disgusting it is? Yeah, it's, it's a taste it's, of your own medicine. It's pretty gross. I'm going to call your dad. Put it on Andrew I'm a little bit I'm calling your dad. Don't call my dad. I'm going to text him a picture. Please don't text him. Of me naked that we took earlier. No, because he's going to— You want my dad to start hitting you up all the time? Can we say— <laughs> Yeah. Because he's going to start hitting you up all the time. When I got home, it's not too late. One to of text the first him, right? things he said to me was, "Is this why Michael texted me the other day?" <laughs> it wasn't. It was a genuine accident and where I I said to my my Google, I said, "Hey Google, can you call Rachel?" Hey yo Google, I said, "Call Rachel Cesera," and it called Richard Cesera. Yeah, that happened at my middle school graduation. But what I will do is we're going to post Richard Cicera's, um phone number oh on the Instagram God. and Twitter. Are you trying to ruin my life <laughs> Why? and my no, no, great no, relationship so, with my dad? No, no. It's just so that our listeners can text him if they're concerned about you. What? Maybe through that, maybe, you know, you have a chance to sell enough socks to stay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Call Richard Cicera. I'm going to post, we're, we're going to post his phone number on the Twitter and Instagram. No, and, we're not. And I'll, I'll, maybe I'll make a whole YouTube video. Be just like a like character a, reference. A looping for you. video of him with his phone number. And so just call him and talk to him and find out from him whether you should buy Rachel socks or Michael socks. Oh my God. That's not fair because he'll say to buy your socks. He loves me. Answer truthfully. For Christmas this year, would he be more happy and excited? It would be yours. Yes! It would absolutely be yours. Yes! There's something about, yeah, he would, <sighs> he'd be like, Rachel, whatever. <laughs> like, I see Richard, that. if you're listening to this, I love you too. I'm never, I can't, dad. He's going to find listen. out about the podcast. He stalks you. He does. And I've been putting your name all over. <laughs> I hope he finds out. I haven't even gotten to meet him yet. This would be a fun way to do it. Okay, the Andrew socks. Wait, I'm going to text them. Don't text him. I'm texting him. What are you saying to him? I told you I was going to send a naked picture of me. Oh, my God. (laughs) My lives are bleeding together in this way. I really don't enjoy. Free bleeding together? I don't need Michael flirting with my dad this openly. Because my dad is so into Michael. Huh. All right, fine. So, okay, so the Andrew socks. I just did it. He's probably asleep. It's 9.30. You don't think a naked picture from Michael would wake him up? He will, he'll look at it at what like if he 2 sends a, What if he sends a nude back? Oh, my God. That would be so amazing. <laughs> with one of our socks. With Michael's sock over his junk. He already found it and bought it. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't even told anyone he about it. He fucking would. My dad's a creep like that. Like, I will tell him. That's why I can't tell him anything anymore. Oh, can we tell that story real quick? No. Uh, well, let's just tell a version of it. No, we can't really we tell can't. it. Can we? No, no. I'll, I'll tell a version of it that doesn't. That doesn't doesn't implicate anyone. Uh, and then maybe we'll probably cut it out. So I think, you know, we've said before, Rachel and I are writers in Hollywood. And, we, you know, we don't have, like, big careers and stuff. Yet. But we have friends. You know, we there's people in our lives who are either famous or connected to famous people and shit. And we had a fucking situation where Rachel told her dad. Oh, he texted back. What? He says, my baby. With an exclamation point. To a point. naked picture of you? <laughs> it also says a picture came in. Should I look at it? Oh my god! I'm a picture horrified. didn't come in. I said a picture of you, you dingle. <laughs> of me? Yeah, okay, well, I just took better. a picture of you. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna yeah. send him a naked picture. I don't... Well, if he was texting both of us, I think you can't have my dad's. No. Can we add your dad to the Sunday morning orgy group? No. So we have a group text. Obviously, he a picture of me just now in the podcasty stuff. Yeah, and he's gonna have to fucking shit. He doesn't know your your computer's in front of the microphone. He okay, just great. sees you with headphones on. All right. <laughs> but I did say we're recording the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Sunday Morning Orgy. Here's the Instagram. Well, I sent him the link two Please weeks buy ago. My socks. <laughs> I sent him our first cut before we even released. And he agreed with me that he said Doug has a girlfriend. <laughs> okay, can we move on, please? Well, we don't have a guest this week, so I don't know. Like, well, can we go, I think can it's you fine like, that we're taking our time. Wait, you, you got to read I want to not talk about my dad anymore. We got to read your socks still. Oh, shit. Okay. okay. Andrew Socks. Can I, t- what if I text him, send a pic? No, that's so fucking creepy. Michael, can you please <laughs> not? Just send N-D-Z-P-L-Z. What? Like nudes, please. Oh, he won't get that. And also, no, no. Do you remember when one of our older friends sent me the text message DTF question mark? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's a there's a restaurant. <laughs> there's a restaurant out here in Los Angeles called Din Tai Fung. It's like, <laughs> it's, 
<laughs> it's really good. It's, it's like really good dumpling, Chinese it's dumpling It's the best. Place. They have the best soup dumplings. They're amazing. The and my friend, she's an older woman. And I just get this text out of the blue from her. that says DTF question mark. And I was like, oh no, what's going on? <laughs> I sent the wrong message somehow. What did I do? But no, she just wanted to get dinner. We did fuck after. <laughs> okay, moving on. Okay. Socks. socks. God, get to it, Rachel. Okay. Jeez. So Andrew Socks say, Andrew doesn't wear socks often, but when he does. Wait, describe the socks. Okay, they're like these very to, beautiful so to, hold on. purple hold socks. On. Hold on. Listen to Rachel trying so hard not to sell our socks. I wasn't going to sell my Just socks. Just for that, audience, please. Please go out and buy This entire episode is going to be socks. me fucking and, and talking listen, about socks. Here's another incentive also. If you buy a pair of Michael or I socks, we'll send you a nude. Is Rachel going to do that? No. I will do that. And everyone who buys my pair of socks will be entered into a raffle and they will win a special custom prize from me. His Christmas butt plug but from it, 1993. <laughs> 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 In 1993, I would have been four years old. Okay, well, I didn't know how... Old you were yeah. in 1993. I'm 31 people. I wasn't trying to do so that math. Old. How old is everyone? I'm 31. I'm 25. I'm 26. I turned 26 in 17 days. Can you believe how much older I am than these fucking? Ugh, it's okay. Oh, I'm very mature. <laughs> I'm very. I'm mature. very mature. So the Andrew Hi, socks guys. are are lovely purple. Hello, I'm Rachel. <laughs> Please, please buy my sock. Uh, guys, I was going to explain about Andrew's socks, but... Rachel. words Please don't call my dad. <laughs> Is that me trying please. to breathe around my tongue? What is please that? <laughs> please don't take my dad. Do I have a dick in my mouth? Please. <laughs> please. Don't, don't, don't take my dad. <laughs> Buy my socks. I don't want to get kicked off the podcast. <laughs> Rachel, shut up. Oh, why are you so oh. mean to me? Oh. Hey. Rachel, come on, just say the, the sock thing. Okay, I'll do it. Okay, I'm sorry. Here I go. <laughs> <laughs> you guys sound like what is that thing when Patrick's like little 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 you know Spongebob oh my god let's stop talking about Spongebob and start talking about our socks <laughs> have you ever put your Spongebob in her Squidward sorry alright let's move on talk, okay. talk about the socks the socks <laughs> so gross I thought you were gonna say square pants and then you just took it there so the the, the Andrew socks are they're purple they're beautiful That he's on it Okay. So, so just imagine 20 or 30 times as, as amazing as she just made it sound because she's really trying to underplay them. I'm not trying to underplay The truth it. is that Rachel's socks of the three pairs are definitely the rattiest. The rattiest? They're not great. And also, I can't guarantee that they'll be clean. Also, either. if you buy ours, buy like your regular size and then buy like another size or oh, the same one size si if you need it they're for one your size, penis. One size. <laughs> and because they're... Also comfortable. Michael and I have tested them out. They're I actually, very comfortable to put your genitals into. We are recording this naked. All three of us. Yeah. yeah. We record every podcast naked. Because we're committed to you guys. Mm -hmm. Okay. Socks. Andrew socks. Purple, luscious socks. Mm. Andrew doesn't wear socks often. But mm. when he does, you can be sure it's all he's wearing. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, fuck. Oh, mm. shit. Fuck. Oh, uh. oh, so oh, oh. Andrew socks. Purple. Oh. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay. okay, can we get through this fucking sock segment? I, I want it's to. ridiculous. No one wants to hear about this anymore, Rachel. I Hurry up. We only got one more pair, and then don't worry, I have transition. Oh, okay, great. Okay, so then there's my sock, which is orange and has my face all over it. It's red. <laughs> it's orange. <laughs> You're retarded. It's orange. Would you buy socks a from a sock. person who doesn't know their colors? I designed the sock. <laughs> this is orange, objectively. Oh, my word. It's like a deep orange, but okay. it's orange. Okay, well, so if you buy way, them don't... and they come in the mail and there's the other color than Rachel said, send them back and we'll <laughs> refund your money. And then it won't count towards... 
<laughs> All right, they're like an orangish red, and they say, the description says, Rachel wears the same pair every episode and definitely doesn't wash them in between. <laughs> As someone who grew up without shoes... It's not over, that's... <laughs> As someone who grew up without shoes... It took many years for Rachel to acclimate <laughs> to the strange sensation of having this part is fucking they're like no, hold on. sweaters. But that's not feet. even that's not even how this hold, sentence hold on, ends. Hold on, hold on. Just okay, so wait. Let me just, start at the wait, beginning. Yeah, start at the beginning. Read it all over. Rachel wears the same pair every episode and definitely doesn't wash them in between. <laughs> As someone who grew up without shoes. This is true. No, it's not. It took many years for Until Rachel. Until she was 13. It took many years for Rachel to acclimate to the strange sensation <laughs> of having enough money <laughs> to afford a sock. <laughs> DM her to buy used. <laughs> I just want to point out, Michael's hysterically laughing at his own writing right now. Michael wrote this description and has been frothing at the bit for me to read this. I mean, you should buy these socks because you feel bad for me at the very least. At least buy pity socks. Come on, people. Kick her off. (laughs) Kick her off. No, for real. For real. On a serious note. Please buy, please buy more of my socks and Andrew socks because it'll. I just can't tell you how funny and fun it's gonna be. I'm depressed already because I know. Oh, it's it's really good stuff. Oh my god. Also, for Michael and I's socks, the profit that we get from that, we're gonna buy things for each other and and use that money for good. And Rachel's gonna keep all the profit for herself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It gets so mean. It's like, I think you're just going to say, I'm not used to the feeling of socks. And then you just go, <laughs> to the, the feeling, feeling of-, of having enough money to afford a sock. <laughs> Which I know was a decision you made. I know you didn't say pair of socks. Okay, can we be done with the fucking socks already? But please yeah. buy them. Listen. An equal amount. But no, but for, for real, Rachel uh, didn't actually own a pair of shoes until she was 13. It's not for real. Which is very sad. It kind of reminds me of one of those like Celine Dion commercials for abused animals. That's not Celine Dion. That's In fucking um, Sarah McLaughlin, you monster. Sa- Sarah Ma- Dion. Was it Jewel? <laughs> no. Who does the one for the kids? Do the, you the, the, remember the, me? The kids what? living in poverty. Oh. Okay, great. Well, please. so wait, I want to go back and finish my story about Vicky Zanoni. All right. How many girls have you dated that their last names are rhymed right, with Italian? Baloney? Rhymed with Zamboni. Oh, where well, there was um, Sandra Cannoli. No way. Her name was not Cannoli. <laughs> there was. <laughs> Lasagna Capicoli. <laughs> Lasagna. <laughs> Lasagna is her you first her name. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> no, that's not, I, I didn't even date her. I never even I dated her. I gotta stop her. snorting into the microphone. <laughs> I'm sorry, Vicky Zanoni, wherever you are now. And to, also to you, lasagna, pasta, <clears throat> spaghetti. Wow, that was, that's <laughs> fucking racist. Yeah. You can't do three pastas in a row and just one of them just say pasta. <laughs> it's not even a distinct kind of pasta. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel hates Italians, among other that's not true. Uh, races I and am, ethnicities I and nationalities. Italian. She's a ra- no, you're not. You are not. What's your last name? Say your last name. So Sarah. Yeah, not Italian. Sorry. Just because it doesn't <clears throat> sound like Zamboni. <laughs> that, that's literally. What do you think? I grew up with all these fucking Italian all right, kids. Get on your what- fucking story already. So anyway, I see this porno. Like, my, my mom and dad have this porno. Dude, stop bringing up your parents in your sexual life. Why? They have a sexual life. But don't connect it with yours. Well, it's connected in the sense that <laughs> I went and found their fucking butt plugs, all right? And they bought you them for Christmas? <clears throat> oh, my God. No, but I'm going to use the proceeds from my socks to buy Andrew a very large dildo. Buy more socks if you want it to be bigger, all right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a lot of room in my bedroom, so it's definitely going to be a main feature. 
Can you get one that's like a fountain, like a water? Why don't we have thing? a house dildo that just sits uh, like a mezuzah? A uh, what? One of the ones, there are ones that can like stick against the wall. Do you know what a mezuzah is? That sounds no. like a drunk person like wow. saying the name of a gun or something. Okay. I see my mezuzah. Okay, so just real quick, I just want to point out that my last name is Guggenheim. You probably assume that out of the three of us, I was the, probably the only one who's not an anti-Semite between… Andrew not knowing what a mezuzah is and Rachel voting for Donald Trump. Uh, that I probably won't c- again, though. I think I've learned my lesson. Really? <laughs> you know how many Jewish people were in my hometown? Andrew knows the exact number. No, I don't actually. But I assume it's zero. <laughs> um, no, a mezuzah is, is like a little, uh, a little thing that uh, Jews hang on their door. And b- despite the fact that I'm a Guggenheim, I'm not a Jew. I'm Catholic. Or I grew up Catholic. So I, I watch this porn, you know, I, I, you know, I sneak into the living room with it, like after school, and I, I put it in, I'm, I'm watching it, whatever. And I Did just you have to rewind it, or was it already at the beginning? I don't really remember, but I know that I had to like rewind it to wherever it was. Um, oh, shit. <laughs> afterwards, right? I would have forgotten to do that. <laughs> Be kind, rewind. Yeah, no, I was definitely trying not to get caught. So anyway, watch this porno that I found in my parents' bedroom. And then I go to school the next day. And um, I had this uh, English teacher named Miss Cranston. And we were, it was her English class. And me and all the other kids are sitting on the floor in a circle. And Vicky Zanoni is sitting like two or three people away from me. And, you know, classic Vicky Zanoni. She's got her legs splayed open, like just full, full, oh my God. full spread eagle. And <clears throat> for the first time in my life, I could do that like x-ray thing where you can imagine what she looked like naked. You know? Is this a skill that all men have? I think Isn't this a skill that people all people have? have? I'm terrible at it. I think I picture the same body on every person. Mm. Is anyway. it a good body or do you picture like a bad body on everyone? Medium. Not that there's any bad bodies I mean, what are you talking? What the fuck are you talking about? Just tell your story. For, and it's not, it wouldn't just be body. It'd be like the cock. Like, what do you, like, you imagine the same cock on everyone? <laughs> it's a little hot, Cheeto. Anyway, I just remember, it was such a distinct, like, formative experience of seeing this girl and being like, whoa. I know, like, I could see what it would be like for her to be naked. And I remember popping a fucking little boner. <laughs> is that the whole Vicky That's Zanoni the whole story? Vicky Zanoni story. Oh my god, what a waste of time. <clears throat> was okay. that your first boner? No. How old were you? Whoa. I was in sixth grade. Uh, oh, okay. I was thinking you were a lot younger. No, no. I feel like I was imagining people naked. Like, even if I didn't know what it correctly would look like, I just <clears throat> would imagine people naked. Yeah, but this is different. Watching a video where you see someone get fucked when I'd never seen anything like that before. Mm, I know what you're saying. It, th- yeah. it was so intense. Well, also to have those images all of a sudden in your <clears throat> mind. Like, I remember being in class and when you're a little kid, maybe you think of like boogers or farts or like just a penis is funny or something. And then like, all of a sudden you're sitting in class and you think about some woman getting railed in the asshole and you're like, oh God, I got to focus on my math test. Well, starting in middle school, that was pretty constant. And also I remember the first time that I masturbated to a girl. When I started masturbating, when I was probably like, I don't know, 10 or 11, it was all feeling. I wasn't imagining anything, mm, I know right? What you mean. It was just, it just felt good to rub my dick or whatever. But then I went to a theater camp and there was this girl, Vicky Collier, and she was this black girl. She had big, fat titties, and she was really cute, and she had kind of had a funny voice. And I remember she was the very first girl that— I don't even know why. I don't know where it came into my head, but I just—I was jerking off, and then I thought of her and just, like, nutted immediately. <laughs> just, and it was like, you know, you're when you're a kid like that, it was, it was probably, like, full fire hydrant spray. Like, like stalactites the, on the ceiling. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, what an image. Yeah, when when we were kids, we saw launch. Dude. Really? Yeah, the projectile force was in yeah. How intense. far? What's your furthest? Probably the ceiling or something. And now it's like a dribble. <laughs> like a tear. No, it depends. It's it depends. one single if, sad tear. Uh, it depends. If I'm jerking off all the time, then there's not a lot of force. Yeah, that's like when your nuts are like, come on, dude. Come on. Like, uh, we don't have a lot I'm left sh- down here. Like, what? <laughs> like, we're trying to get off for the night, like. But if you haven't beat it or fucked or whatever, if you haven't nutted in like five, six days, oh yeah, you can get you can get a good fucking rope load. It's like loading up the super soaker, you know? Yeah, exactly. More pressure you get in there. Yeah. It's beautiful. Also, ladies, if you like this, if you like the distance, that makes you feel good. The cum shot. Does it make you feel good? Who's wait, where am, why am I watching it? <clears throat> huh? You never watch the cum? Rarely. Out? You've never been cummed on? A lot I of mean, girls like to watch that. No, I have. I just, I 
I feel like, no, I've never thought about distance before. Have so ever, I can't answer. I don't understand though. Everything from you're fucking a guy, he pulls out and nuts on your stomach. He nuts on your face. He, he fucking, you jerk him off and he nuts. There's all these things where you would see how explosive Let the cum shelter. shot was. And you're telling me that that's, you don't. No, that's happened. I guess when you just said, if you like the distance, I started imagining something insane in my head. Have you ever had someone warn you, you that you're a shoot that he's a shooter? No. Were you imagining a guy doing long jump, running full speed down <laughs> a track, and then just at the point where he hits the sand, he's like, <laughs> <laughs> kind of, yeah. Okay, so what were you gonna say about distance? How to create more distance? Oh yeah, if you're a girl. Well, first I was asking, do you like when there's a lot of propulsion as opposed to a dribble? Well, sure. Yeah, that's kind of makes me feel like I've more accomplished. Yeah. 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 Probably has nothing to do with you. Doesn't matter. <laughs> If you're a lady and you want more distance, what you can do is jerk the dick or do whatever you got to do to get it prepped. But then once you get into the final countdown there, you jerk it. And right when he says he's nutting, you just uppercut the nuts over and over. <laughs> bam, 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 bam. Right? Really hard. There's a porno that I saw where she's jerking this guy's dick. And then as soon as he starts coming, she starts fully, full force full uppercutting punch. his nuts. And each time she hits the nut... The cum launches like a fucking, like a sock rocket. what Or like a what? A sock no, rocket. what were those things like the stomp launcher? Oh, yeah. A stomp <laughs> rocket. Like a stomp rocket. You guys remember those? The stomp rocket? Yeah. Vaguely. Like the children's toy, you stomp on it and it like, it's got yeah. air thing and it shoots up. Yeah. Yeah. Just launch like fully. Or like the like, thing at the fair with the hammer and the thing goes up and rings the uh -huh. bell. Yeah. Wow. Good yeah. to know. We'll try. I don't know if I want to get punched in the nuts. No, me neither. Don't do this to me. Yeah. Maybe in the taint I mean, or something. We I can know. talk about it. <laughs> I could see that being pleasurable. I try to be open to kinky stuff that a girl wants to try. Yeah, me too. Okay, I have a lyrical quote of the week. Great. Let's hear it. Because Poppy did some homework. Oh. All right. To prepare for this podcast, I listened to an album by Janae Iko. There's a song called Pussy Fairy. And in this song, she says, That dick make my soul smile. That dick make me so proud. <laughs> wow, that's... More romantic than I thought it would be. And that is the biggest compliment I think I've ever heard for a dick to this day. I do like it when someone says it's big, but <laughs> that's, a, that's a close second. <laughs> I mean, I think that's implied, but, right? But, but is that a thing that she's saying? You wouldn't be proud of a tiny one. Let me, let me ask you, let's ask a real question to, to our resident dick expert. And if, that? if you were confused, it's not the two members of the podcast who have uh, the appendage, uh, but the one who's had the most of them in her uh, mouth and hands and butt and uh, uh, her fuckhole. <laughs> this week on Rachel's Jesus Dick Facts. Christ. In her wizard, wizard sleeve. <laughs> what the fuck is that? It's the thing that, look. You... Wizard sleeve. Oh, my wizard sleeve. Oh. <laughs> Dick Facts with Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the segment. Dick Facts with Rachel. Oh, my God. Oh. I'm horrified. <laughs> Dick Facts with Rachel. Oh. <laughs> What? What do you want to know? <laughs> I can't even remember now. What What was that? Oh, this is what I want to know. Is Janae Aiko in that song, is she complimenting a dick that's not that big? Is that, is that why she's getting all flowery? No, based on the rest of the song, she's talking about getting rolled by a hog. Yeah, I don't think right. she's talking about okay. any I mean, mediocre situation. You should read all the lyrics, really. It, the whole song's great. Yeah, Wait, no, what, what is the point of this segment? Was, was that it? Is that it? Quote of the week. I was just trying to trigger some... Some some conversation. Can we about can being we, complimentary to a dick? Well, let's. I like how it segued which into, a, into a, new, a new segment, which is the Rachel's dick facts. So, Rachel, give us a dick fact. Yeah, uh, give us. I a don't dick have fact. a dick Just fact. Google dick facts. Give us a dick fact. No, don't Google you, from your experience. <laughs> I need I need a prompt. I can't just throw a dick fact you out there. You are. A whoer? <laughs> I don't just have facts. What is something that you have observed to be true based on the large sample size that you have? <laughs> um, <laughs> Tell us something that is just an intuition you have. Say it in mansplaining, too. Like, here's the thing about dicks. Uh, well, the, but the first thought that popped in my head was the best dick is a clean dick. But that's not really a fact. Yeah, that's it is. Just that's a, a dick fact. And that that's feels like, not true, either. Best dick is a big dick. It's pretty high up there, though, as far as requirements. Because there's nothing worse have, than... Would you rather have... A slightly a, dirty a dick. A huge hog dipped in dookie. Or a tiny, tiny, tiny penis that's squeaky clean. 
Like, it's easily like he's like it's easily a <laughs> dookie dick. Yeah, it's easily dookie dick. It's dookie dick. So you're tall. So your dick fact. Well, that's not fair. <laughs> Size matters more than poop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. All right, let's move on from that segment. Rachel, you did a terrible you job. You sprung a new segment on you, me. So what? That's how dicks work. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, what else we got? That is a shit on dick situation, literally. I did see a porno. Wait, let me talk about this porno I saw because I really, really liked it. The VHS? You don't know at home, but I, I just, I'm kissing my hand like, like a, a chef's a, kiss. Like a, a little pizza, chef's a pizza kiss. Pizza man moment. making a. So I saw this porno where it was a compilation and it was cutting. I hate compilations. <laughs> me too. Really? I fucking hate them. Why? Because you, there's well, one that you like and it's 13 are seconds you long that and Michael I keep, gets to, off keep having on to rewind video back to the editing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait Hate until him. I explain what it is <laughs> before you are critical of my enjoyment oh, he of it. Look like what it he's when asking we, for. Wow! <laughs> no, it's just it doesn't make any sense to me. Like you want to be critical before this is the Wait, same what's thing. The this is all what's you do. This is the all same the thing as when you were trying to say all this shit about my mom, and then I was like, no, actually, my mom said this, and it's like if you just waited, whatever. Tell Dude, your porn did, story. But then you interrupted. Tell me to tell the story. To Michael's parents. Huh? What? He did that. <laughs> Go. <laughs> okay, so anyway, I was watching this porno. It was a compilation, and it was cutting back and forth between <laughs> girls pulling down a guy's pants and the penis being extremely large and the girl being like, oh my God, and like covering her mouth and, and being like astounded. <laughs> like when it would just like flop and spring out and stuff and almost like poke her eye out. These big fucking mongo chongos. Does it have like a spear on the end of it? No, they're fucking... Dude. Dude. I, I believe you. I've seen some Mongo Chongo. Yeah, yeah. There were some Mongo Chongo porn dicks. And then it would cross cut from that to a clip of a girl pulling a guy's pants down. And it's just like a half a Tic Tac. <laughs> and the girl's like laughing at him. And this all this is all the porn was. It was that over and over and over. Just back and forth. This giant dick with the girl being astounded and tiny dick with the girl laughing, laughing and, and humiliating wow. the guy. And the guy getting embarrassed. And I came. At which one? When you saw the big dick or the small Probably the big dick. The Let's be real. <laughs> the <know>. left. <laughs> no, I'll tell you what. I'll tell that's you what. Be, this is that's, a, that's a real thing that people get I, off I on, like I'm a sure. big dick in my pornos. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. And I, I, you know, I don't have any problem with that. That's great. Me too. Seeing a girl like really struggle <laughs> is... <laughs> I think there's a threshold. For <laughs> I know me. what you mean, but it sounds really weird. There's know. a threshold. Struggling for me. to take it, you know, yeah. like that's exciting. But uh, I'm definitely like, if I see a Mongo Chonga, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to see what happens. Does the girl pop, you know? Does the girl pop? Rachel, have you ever taken a, a cock so big that, you know, that thing that happens in porn sometimes when the guy's dick is so big that it looks like the scene from Alien where the thing <laughs> pops out the guy's chest? <laughs> no, that has not happened to me. But you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Where, like, he's fucking her and her belly is, is just literally popping oh, out, God. popping in and out. Yeah, no, that hasn't happened to me. That seems extremely oh, painful. I feel bad for you. I'm, I don't think yeah, it's I happened want to that. both of us. Good for you. <laughs> Did we even explain what the fuck this podcast is about for someone no. who's joining us for the first time? Rachel, what? Explain the podcast like we just did our intro. Sunday Morning Orgy, what is it? Why are you listening? Why is your life about to change? Sunday Morning Orgy is a sex, love, dating advice podcast with three of us uh, who are going to give you advice because we know what to do. A t- <laughs> Stop saying our address! <laughs> Why are you trying to give our address out? Pasadena, California. We're going to have groupies come break into our house and rape us, Andrew. What's Dude, this, I hope so. What's the zip code? For any of the ladies out there, tie me up. I'm ready. <laughs> but I'll act like I'm not for your pleasure. I've only been tied up once, I think, or twice. I have not been tied up enough in my life. Wow. I have I, been, I, but I know for a fact I haven't been tied up enough. I, enjoy, I just got really mad when we started talking about that. I really enjoy tying a woman up. It's very fun. You've got like a whole box of goodies, don't you? I do. I have a sex box full of sex toys and ropes and whips and handcuffs and all kinds of things. I remember when you bought it, you called me and you were like, I bought a sex box. Do you ever dump out all the shit in the sex box and tell the girl to climb in the box and close it and just... It's it's way too small of a box for that. But what I do... So, okay, so you know how I have a hammock in my room? I'm... I, I have a hammock in my bedroom. Michael just kind of did a hip thrust forward when he started talking about the hammock. 
Just want to make I'm, a, just, look, I'm, I'm the type. I'm the type of dude who's just got a hammock. Little banana in his man with a banana hammock. That's right. Anyway, I have a hammock in my bedroom, and what I can do is I can take the hammock down, and there's two uh, hooks. There's two hooks. I'll run the rope through that, and I'll get the girl in like a in like a Saint Thomas's cross. <laughs> is that what it's called? But so it's like the big X. You know what I'm talking about? Can you look that up real quick? I'm not You've Catholic. Got a, you got a laptop? I don't think it's a Catholic thing. Actually, it might be. Who knows? Who else has saints? I feel like the Catholics are kinky. That's a kinky religion. For sure. Look up like <laughs> like dungeon cross saint. Are you talking about the scientific picture? It's an X. Picture? It's oh. a big X. Like, like on Game of Thrones? I'm not sure about Googling dungeon cross, but we're going to... Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is it called? Dungeon cross? Well, I mean, cross? I just have a picture of it. St. Andrew's. St. Andrew's cross. Okay, sorry. Yes, so what I do is I have these two hooks for my hammock in my bedroom, but I can run the rope uh, through it. And then I'll get the girl strung up like she's on a St. Andrew's cross where her arms are up and out. And then I'll run the cord down and spread her legs and, and have it tied out so she can't close her legs either. If you're eating her out or using a vibrator on her, kind of torturing her with that stuff. The fact that she doesn't really have anywhere to go, the struggle of all that. And the one, and like when they come, they want, or like as they're getting close, they just want to collapse, but can't. So all that, all that tension really, it's very exciting. I'm getting aroused. Yeah. Yep, same. Good. Well, now that we're all horny, what were we talking about? Please, we started out horny. We're trying to tell people what the podcast is about. Yeah, we're trying to tell people what the podcast is about. You were doing a good job. Wow. Rachel I th- I thought was she did doing a, a I thought job. she did a great job. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You know I'm going to cut out the compliment. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Exactly. You have a really nice podcast voice. Do you know this? No, I don't know Do you that. know how all three of us have been getting a lot of compliments on our voices? No. Really? Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, that's super nice. That's really nice to hear. A lot of people are saying, you guys, you have the quality of voices that are really good for this. We sound unique and not boring. And, and, but also just pros. We oh. have a strong, distinct voice. Some people sit up in their nose on their voice or mm. whatever. Well, know. that's great news. Yeah. Oh, Doug. Oh, oh, oh. oh my God. All right, let's talk about Doug. Yeah, let's, let's talk about talk Doug. About Doug. Okay, All so... Right. What's new with Doug today? Has he got a family or is it AIDS? What's new with Doug today? Rachel, you better have some shit to say. If, uh, or if you don't remember. Recap. Recap. From last week, (laughs) uh, Rachel didn't give us any good new information about Doug. And Andrew and I told her that if she didn't have something really good for us, that we were going to call Doug up. That was the threat. Um, And we do not make empty threats. We don't make empty threats. And we've actually been doing some detective work. Yes. What? What? Yeah. We've been doing some detective work. We've put in a little, you know, we're a little private investigator action. Over the past week, while Rachel's abandoned us to go up to Oregon. And Your boys were back in, in sunny California. Yes. Getting down to work. Getting down to work. And we found a phone number of someone who is maybe connected to Doug and knows some, has some information for us. Holy balls. Really? Yeah. yeah. I'm not a fan of this. Yeah, yeah. So can we, can we call? Let's of call. Of course, we have to. Yeah, yeah. Let's call. <laughs> Rachel's hyperventilating. I don't like this at all. <laughs> Come on, let's call. Let's call. How are you going to call? Ah, what do you mean? Hit my face. Is it? Are we using your phone? How are we going? I don't know who it is. It doesn't matter. How am I going to call? I will give you the number. I don't like this. Give your phone to Andrew. I'm I'm so uncomfortable. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to throw up. Good. <laughs> I right. don't I don't like it. Andrew, uh, just tell me when you're ready, and I'll give you the phone number. All right, I'm ready. I'm going to shit my pants. Why? Well, okay, I'll say this. You already confessed that poop doesn't matter to you that much. It's fine. Well, uh, <laughs> are you really going to poop your pants? I'm not right going to poop my pants. I'm just like. <laughs> then you'll have to buy a new pair of socks. Listen, we're not you calling have to him. Buy ours. <laughs> we told you we would give you a shot this week, but we need to show you that we fucking mean business. That that. How do we... you're not wait, wait, calling wait, wait, him? Our threats are not idle, Rachel. Do you, do you have news though? Because that was the deal. Yeah, but hold on. But but she needs to know that our threats are not idle, true. which is why we're going to call this person who has this a, week's. Who has this a, is punishment for you last. You promise week. you're not calling him right now? Yes, it's not Doug. But I want, I'll also say we do have Doug's number. Yeah. I know. Well, he's got my phone in his hand right now. These aren't idle threats, and you have to know. So we're going to call someone who's close to him. Uh, I'm going to We're going to— we This listen. is the worst day of my life. <laughs> <laughs> 
Give me the number. We're going to call someone who's close to him. Just but so you know. does this person know, even know what's going on? Because he hasn't told a lot of people. Just so you know that we don't fucking play. And that if you, listening at home, if you buy more Michael and Andrew socks than Rachel socks, we will kick Rachel off the podcast. We don't fucking play. All right, ready, Andrew? Yep. Rachel has her eyes squeezed shut right now. <laughs> Oh dang! Who is it? Hold on, hold on. Wait, hold on. I should face. No, no. Time. Let me. No, I'm gonna. Te- I'm texting him. Him. Wait, it's a dude. This. I thought it was. It is a dude. Yeah. Did you think it was gonna be his girlfriend? Because that's <laughs> who we're calling next week. If you don't give us some real dirt. Because we found her too. Yeah. No, you didn't. Her yes, name we is did. Lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I knew who it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be. Oh no. Who is this? I I texted him. I mean, it is, it is kind of late now. This person's on the East Coast. What? Yeah. yeah, he's from Florida. Yeah. You guys are fucking with me. No, we're not. We found someone from his past, from his life. I mean, I guess I don't know if it's like past or present, but uh, he's not responding. Well, maybe next week. Yeah, maybe next week. We I mean, lucked out this time. Andrew, will you erase the call? Duh. Yeah, okay. Because Rachel isn't going to remember the phone number we just said, and I don't, wanna, I don't want her to uh, sabotage our plan. It's going to be... Ah, fuck. God damn it. Damn. False alarm. Oh, my God. You're so freaked out right now, Rachel. Well, I'm so... Like, who? 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 I, I'm pretty convinced it's an elaborate ruse for you guys to just fuck with me and get his number. And you just sent his number to Michael. No, we already have his number. I don't trust you guys at all. You know that we know mutual people. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you do. Yeah. So it was really easy to get his number. It's the first thing we did. Our threats aren't idle. And our research is thorough. That's right. We're true investigators. But isn't that fucking weird if he, like, hasn't told anybody about this and that you guys are reaching out to people? Yeah, but you don't know what we said to them. And on the side, we're filming some porn where we're, like, investigators that go have sex with people. Sure. I don't know how you want me to do anything else now. Shercock Holmes. Who are you texting? <laughs> I'm try- what do you mean, home? I'm, t- I'm trying to see if our guest can. I'm going to be legitimately angry if you're texting him right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All dead. We've been searching and we've been snoping and we gon' find out what Doug been doing, yeah. Come on, Rachel, calm down, relax. We're just trying to get the facts. Yo, Doug, how big's your dick? Do your wife standing up or while you sit? What's the address of your wife and kids? Are you a good guy or are you a piece of shit? Give me facts, don't try to hide the information that I desire. Are you afraid of what we'll find? Do you wish to hide your crimes? I am most skilled in the sleuthing arts, stealth and smarts in equal parts. I don't wish to ruin lives, simply tell me what transpired. Doug, ha, more like Douglas. Yeah, we know your real name, bet you wish we dug less. What's that you wanna confess? Well, you better come clean like you're only eating greens, cause we're all sick of it. What's this predicament? So on the fence about fucking a friend? Something is up to find what's our intention. Tell us the truth before we invent it. We've been searching and we've been snooping and we gon' find out what Doug been doing, yeah. Come on, Rachel, calm down, relax. We're just trying to get the facts. We've been searching and we've been snooping and we gon' find out what Doug been doing, yeah. Come on, Rachel, calm down, relax. We're just trying to get the facts. I have nothing to say to you two. I'm stressed out. Good. Wait, do you have any news for us? Yeah, this is the whole fucking thing with the segment. Do you have news about Doug? The only news I have is that I told him about the podcast. That's big news. Okay. That's the news that I have. And he listened to it? He hasn't. I don't think he's listened to it. Didn't I haven't sent it to him. You didn't. Wait. Well, okay. So what did he, what did, what did he think? He. Did he come clean? No, he's got a girlfriend. No, I told him that he was heavily featured Uh in the first couple, at least. For the people at home, we've officially, at this point, released one episode. So did he listen to that? No, he hasn't. I don't think he has. If he has, he hasn't. I didn't send it to him. I just, if he listens, all he's going to hear is be like, oh, 
dope. When's, my dick is big. When's the, <laughs> no, I don't think. Don't you think he's going to be upset about me over and over again? <laughs> Screaming about how he has a girlfriend? Don't you think he's going to feel caught? Well, also, also, don't you think that if you let him listen to it, you're going to give him the room to, to, cover, to uh, hide his tracks? I don't know. He said, so I told him that he was heavily featured. Mm. And I told him that I used a fake name. And he said, oh, you didn't even, like, you didn't have to do that. <laughs> had, okay, so his no name is, <laughs> no, what's his no, last name? No, 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 that doesn't. What's his last name? That actually does not what's mean that I want to do that. I'm not what's telling you. I'm name? not telling you. Did he have that in writing? Was no, he doesn't text? have it in writing. It was, he said it out loud. What's oh, his last shit. name? Don't. I, I don't want to do that. I just want to know, though. No. Just for it, me. Oh, not for your contact info? No, not because for Because you have his fucking number in your phone because you guys are assholes. And that was all the rooms. <laughs> yeah, that was all the rooms so you could get his number. <laughs> if it wasn't for you meddling I'm, kids. I'm going to fucking text him right now and be like. i again. <laughs> that's I'm, I'm going to. He's going to. Ah, I hate this so much. <laughs> Oh my god! I can't believe I fell for it too. Oh, it's so. Good. They had, took my phone oh. from me, and he just went in my phone and sent the number to Michael, and that's all that happened. And I'm a fucking idiot for falling for it. I didn't send Michael anything. He literally didn't send me anything. We got his number already. We told you that. I. I- I don't understand why you think we need your phone. Why would I go through this whole ploy? I would have never thought that would have worked. You're such a suspicious person. Uh, I am. This is, okay, so no, I'm but that you, Look mean- at me in the eye. I'm telling you the truth. We didn't, he didn't just send me his number. Also, you know I'm not quick we enough have to his, do that. We have his number. And we didn't need to get it from Did you. you get it from We got it. That's the point. <sighs> My God. No, you, but that doesn't mean I want You just said it. her real name. Okay, yeah. well, we can cut it out. Did What's you get his it? last name? I'm not going to tell you his just last name. Just tell me his last no! name. No! I just want to know. No! Why? So should we no, call so that doesn't mean, from now on? No, I don't want to. I don't actually. I don't want to do that. I want to keep. It's using, gonna confuse the audience. Doug, yeah, we yeah, stick he's with Doug. Doug. <laughs> so yeah, he said he he said he was like flattered that he was in the podcast, mm-hmm. and <laughs> oh, he should listen to it before. He- <laughs> I know. I was like, <laughs> great. Um, I mean, did it say he has a big dick? That- I didn't say anything about him that was bad. Well, you said things about him that indicated to most of our listeners that he's a cheating scumbag. <laughs> <laughs> that is not how I meant them. Yeah, but mo- well, so I should say, because I'm sure for the people at home, you'd want to know this, that many of you have been writing in saying, um, hey, we love the podcast. And also, you're totally right. He definitely has a girlfriend and he's definitely cheating. Like many, many people said that. Yep. And actually, we're going to put a Twitter poll. Um, I'm we, so stressed. We're who gonna, we're who gonna, do you know? We're going <laughs> to... <laughs> <laughs> we're going to put a Twitter poll up. So if you think that... Has a girlfriend and is cheating Doug. with Rachel. Doug. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. If you think Doug is has a girlfriend and is cheating with Rachel, uh, please vote on the Twitter. We're gonna do this a Twitter, is horrifying. A Twitter I feel like poll. I have to call him after this and be like, "Look, I don't know what's gonna happen, I mean, but things are gonna happen." He's a creative person. He knows it's all in. He's the- a comedian. Yeah, but I just he's probably talking about, about you on like twenty podcasts. <laughs> That's can't be true. It might be true. What do you think his fake name for you is? <laughs> Doug. Doug. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't tell him. He was like, he was like, what fake name? Do, oh, do you I didn't have? tell him because you know it's a horrible fucking <laughs> I name. I didn't tell him what it was. Yeah. Anyway, I'm just, I'm just fully <laughs> horrified now. That's. But, so you have nothing for us. No. We're calling him. No. Andrew, let's get the phone out. That was nothing. That's, did he, what, he no. didn't have anything to say. You didn't send him the podcast. Go ahead, make your case for why this was interesting to the audience. I, I told you I wasn't going to have anything because— Because I'll tell you what was interesting. You know what was interesting? When we were threatening to call someone who knew Doug. Everyone was on the edge of their seat for that. And in fact, they're probably really upset that that didn't happen. That he knows about the podcast is kind of interesting, but it's not interesting if he doesn't hear it. Why hasn't he heard it? Because you haven't seen it yet. Yeah. Why? Does he know the name? Well, he did write down the name, right. so he knows about it. But he takes like notes it. when you guys talk? Yeah. That's cute. Why the fuck do you not care about our audience? Because I care about no one and nothing. But for real, Andrew, we should talk about this. Like, we have a serious problem. She is showing a serious lack of commitment to this podcast. Well, let's talk about the evidence. Exhibit A. Rachel doesn't show up last week to our podcast recording. That is untrue. I did it fucking remotely while driving up to Oregon. Goes to Oregon. Wait, what does that have to do with Doug? 
No, this is why she doesn't care about the podcast. I did the podcast from an Airbnb while on my way up to Oregon. So I think that shows she that I do care the about the podcast. Well, guess where Andrew and I were? Right here at the house, doing the podcast, caring about our audience, having work interesting from- things to talk about. Exhibit B, <laughs> Rachel did not send Doug the podcast. Exhibit C, Rachel did not even tell us that last week she told Doug about the podcast. Didn't know that that would be a cool thing to know about. Exhibit D and my final exhibit, Rachel did not help with the socks. I rest my case. I didn't know about the socks. If, how am I supposed to help with the socks if I just never know about the socks? Well, if you didn't, if you were around, if you, if you cared. I don't live with you if guys. If you cared to find my, out my what was going on you with us. fucking you, live you, together. You, it was like radio silence from, from you. This, radio silence? The, the whole time you were up in Oregon. I didn't talk to you Oregon. for two days. Two days I didn't talk to you. Okay? <laughs> There's a lot was, of work to be done on I this podcast. I was in Oregon for, for five days. I have a feeling that people are going to be finding this very boring. Okay. Uh, I don't care. I'm just Andrew. telling you right now. You can cut this in the oh, podcast. Oh, my word. Two days. Oh, my word. Two days. And now you guys are oh. emotionally oh, attacking me Jesus with this Christ. stranger from the East Coast. <laughs> and I don't, I feel like. <laughs> that sounds so weird. <laughs> I feel like weirdly gaslit or something. I don't know what's going on. Are you feeling gassy? I'm feeling, well, I am. I already got having shit in like a day from driving. You know, I got the drive constipation. I don't want to talk about cares about this. Andrew, give your case. That's what we care about. As your legal counsel, I would suggest letting me do the talking. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Why well, was you committed to that? <laughs> I'm not as prepared to handle your wrath as Michael is. You're like, defending wait, me. Okay, okay, okay. Let me think about this. I got, he, go, I'm, he's I'm really like, he goes to defend. He just says a bunch of more things <laughs> to make you upset. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, Michael and I have not shared anything as present and relevant in our personal lives right now as Rachel. But, oh, wait, wait, yeah, I'm the defense. Yeah, you're the defense. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> That's the best I got. That is a great point. I'm actually living this in my life. It's a stressful thing. First of all, I fucking talked about throwing a party with all the that girls. That already are happened. Intimate. That's old news. I'm saying there are things in my current life with people I'm currently dating where a whole bunch of stuff erupted over that first podcast episode. (laughs) (laughs) I still think mine is... uh... Well, it's different, yeah. But But we're all going to have our turn. We're all going to have our turn. Loves the story and the details. And even though it's a sacrifice for you... You can't say that we don't love the audience or we don't care about the audience. We care. And so do you. That's why you shared well, stuff. I, that was my argument, was that she doesn't care. I don't care. I've said so much shit about this. Yeah, I know. So much. But again, you're making it about you. Let's talk about the audience and what the audience wants. Like The, the audience, audience hasn't said what they want at all. First the of audience all, we've had wants, no, if, you want, if you want something, write in and say you want it. Because all I'm hearing is fucking abuse from Michael and Andrew. Okay, speaking of, we do have some uh, listener emails. Yeah, let's go to that. Yeah, cool <clears throat> transition. Who so, is it? You're so moody today. Of course I'm moody. I am woman. Oh, should we do a women's corner? No, yeah. I don't want to do a women's corner. I don't think now's the time. I think now's the time. What can I possibly talk about now? I had like some stupid shit about how hot girls give bad advice. And then I realized I've never received advice from a woman ever anyway. So it's a stupid segment. <laughs> women's corner. <laughs> women's corner today is just full of rage. That's okay. wrong. That needs to be real. You Come know? on, That's go like, ahead. No, this is, I, I'm not doing Women's Corner because I feel bamboozled. Bamboozled. Women's Corner. That was a really good Women's Corner. Thank you, Rachel. <laughs> okay okay so we've got <laughs> we got some listener mail we got so this is like this is gonna be kind of annoying probably to the listeners because this is from our first episode and this is our fourth episode but we uh we're doing a little bit of a slow slow release schedule uh we got this message after the first episode we we talked a lot about sucking dick and i you know when we were talking about sluts we were talking about like you know how it's okay to be a slut and zach was slut shaming during that whole thing, I was being very encouraging to girls. I said, go out, suck dick. And one of our fans uh, and good friends of the show, Siobhan, wrote in and said, 
hey, I love all the dick sucking stuff, but I want you guys to talk more about uh, girls getting eaten out. And I thought, let's talk about mm, it. I said, talk yeah, it. let's talk about it because I love eating girls out. And I and I mean, uh, here uh, this is one of the problems. I, I know this because I, you know, talking to a lot of women in my life. <laughs> there was a time not long ago where a lot of dudes didn't wear this thing as like a badge of honor performing cunnilingus. And now there's like all this... they were embarrassed about it socially. It's like not man- it was like not manly to do that. Well, okay, so yes. But there's something different that I'm talking about, which is there was no social pressure to eat girls out, okay? Mm. Now there's all this social pressure to eat women out. On the one hand, this is great. On the one hand, it's, it's normalizing uh, female sexual pleasure. All that element of it is great. Here's the problem that a lot of women have brought up to me. They can't figure out which guys actually know how to go ham in the ham. Mm. Because there's all these guys who are trying to value signal that they're pussy eaters when they're not real pussy eaters. Mm. So I just want to say that I'm a real pussy eater. I've always been a pussy eater. Like, I came right out the gate loving eating pussy and just wanting to do it all the time. I've never been able to understand (laughs) the... The avoidance, like that, just doesn't even make sense. It just feels like a animalistic thing. Like I just, but some dudes don't have it. Like squirrels grow up and they eat nuts, you know. But all squirrels like nuts. Some dudes. There's lots of dudes who don't, don't like eating pussy and are terrible. And Why? And, my, and and here's the thing, I don't even know whether we should be telling those guys to eat pussy as much as we should just be telling chicks. Don't fuck with those dudes. Like, like if you want someone to eat your pussy, find someone that's down to do it. Find a guy who's uh, who's a cunnilingus expert. And if you're a dude who doesn't like to eat pussy, you jump off a cliff. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> so this is how I came into loving eating pussy. Well, okay, so I'll say this. I did come right out the gate loving eating pussy. Like, the first pussy I ate, it was... It was like something I knew I wanted before I ever did it. And it was my first real sexual... Like, I... Did that before I ever got a blowjob, actually. Yeah. Right on. For me, it was just like the excitement of putting my face next to their genitals. That's just fun. Oh, I loved everything about it. I loved the taste. I love how her body reacted when I was eating her out. I loved all of it. That relationship lasted for four years with that girl. And physiologically, we were a little mismatched. It was very hard for us to have intercourse. It was very painful for her. And so we did a lot of oral with each other. A lot. Yeah, we had intercourse sometimes, but it was so painful for her that I was just a little pussy sucking slut. (laughs) And every day we were together, she was riding my face. I was eating her pussy. And so I just became an expert and I became a connoisseur. And starting with that till this day, it's it's my favorite sex act. Wow. Mm. That's saying something. And any girls who have dated me, please write in if you want. Confirm or deny. Yeah, confirm or deny. I feel like it's related to my favorite sex act. Which is? Eating a girl out from behind in the shower. Wow. With the butthole too? Yeah, all of it. Yeah, but tonight we're not talking about buttholes. Nope. We're talking about eating John. Yep. I personally don't like to do it. Eat pussy? Nope. Have you ever tried it? Yeah, wasn't for me. Okay, talk about the first time you got your pussy eaten. Oh, it was so uncomfortable. Very not cool with my body at all. I was like, what are you doing down there? Don't do that type of thing. Uh, scared of that situation. Face too close to, to whatever is happening down there. Not in touch with my body at all. You would not believe the number of women who struggle with being comfortable being eaten out. Yeah, yeah, who are still like that. Because I had that when I was younger. Now I'm like... I'm all about it. Right. No shame about it at all. Right down there. Yeah, I'm like, don't stop kissing me. What, Tell him to what, shut was, the fuck up. <laughs> what, what changed? Like, what made you have a different attitude about it? I think I just, I mean, I just got a little bit older. I got a little more comfortable. I started kind of taking. Uh, sounds so lame, but I just like started taking control of my sexuality in a different way when I got into my early twenties, and just Aren't you it was just, raping people. I was not raping people. Oh, roofing them and... Oh my God, no. I just, if, if the at guy, some point, I just got really comfortable with it. Is unconscious. I don't know that that's consensual, Rachel. That's what I'm saying. He's unconscious. He also can't really eat me out, so... Debate. <laughs> I feel like I could still eat a girl out of gross. Unconscious. You take a, a, a clothes pin oh on his God. tongue. This is a horrifying image. <laughs> A clothespin on his tongue. And two more on his lips. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's not funny. Um, Don't sit on unconscious dudes' faces. Yeah. Unless you got <clears throat> consent first. But yeah, I think I just got... I don't I, I don't remember when. At just some point, I was just like, yep, 
I'm into this and I'm good with it and I need it and I request it at all times. What was the fear for you, Rachel? Well, I, there wasn't like a specific fear for me when I was younger. I was just uncomfortable with myself as a human person. Yeah, I And so I couldn't be like, yeah, I like... I don't like me, but I'm like, I'm good with my pussy. Like there, there was, there had to be like some sort of connection there for that to be uh, possible. So I have some advice for any people out there, men or women who want to eat out their girlfriend, but she's a little, has this discomfort. What you do is you're going to eat her out for at least 40 minutes and you're not going to tell her beforehand that that's what you're doing. You want to do this long enough that all the insecurities eventually go away. If they feel like there's all this pressure, mm. right? Yeah. All, all this pre- yeah, pressure there's, from their partner. Yeah, there's like a stigma too that like in general, it's like hard for women to come, you know? Like it's just... It is harder for women to it, come. It is, but then, it, but then there's there's like a lot more of a psychological thing to having an orgasm. But so if you are... Do you think it's more? It's definitely, it's involved for sure. Like, like there's more some, than men, it's more psychological than it is for men. At least women talk about it more in that way, I would say. There's more societal acceptance for male pleasure in general, I think. And I think what this leads to is more men being comfortable with their bodies and exploring their bodies yeah, more. That's true. I've never heard of a guy who never masturbated. I'm not saying they're not out there, but I've never heard of it. I, I have, but I didn't believe them. Yeah, they were lying. <laughs> but I've heard from many, many women that they don't masturbate. Yeah. And I'm not saying women have to masturbate, but I am saying that in general, it seems to me that the, the women in my life who masturbate a lot are a little more in touch with their own pleasure. Yeah. They know what feels good. They know what they like. I think there's a lot of psychological stuff connected to that. Yeah, and well, it just made me think of this, this a, a girl I went to college with who I, I also think she said that she didn't really masturbate but she was with this guy and she in like one conversation it started out with her saying the sex is great we have so much fun blah blah blah. um and I was like does he go down on you because that's always like my first question and she said oh you know I don't really like it and I was like oh okay cool and then later on in that conversation she was saying like he never goes down on me it really bothers me so she was saying like I don't like it but he never does it I was like which yeah, it's a big connection there. Yeah. I think what you were saying earlier, Michael, like when you have to keep going, even though a girl is like, it's not that she's trying to stop you. It's just that she, her insecurity to overcome that, you have to be constant. And you, know, you have, have to, to learn that it's that you are desirable in that way, that you're not like gross. If you're right. not someone that's into it, you're not going to be into it. But like if you just have an insecurity about it, you kind of need someone to listen. And once you, a girl knows that you're doing it for you, like you're eating pussy because you want to eat her pussy. That's right. So you need to eat that pussy because it tastes good, because you enjoy it, because you like the sensation that you're giving to her. And when is she going to deny you of something you love that much? You know, <laughs> you don't need to focus on her orgasm. And if she feels from you that you're super hyper focused on her orgasm for a girl who is having this kind of trouble that kind of pressure is going to be a turnoff and so what you do is you get down there and you eat her out for 40 minutes and i'll tell you what after the first five minutes she might be like oh you don't have to and you're just like no it's okay just you know shut up that's like telling someone like (laughs) you you don't have to you don't have to finish that ice cream cone if you don't want to because she's thinking somehow i'm gonna be a disappointment Yeah, absolutely. When you just stay with it, your first five minutes, then you're 10 minutes in, right? Then you're 15. Now you're 20 minutes in. There comes a point. Eventually, they stop thinking like, oh, he's trying to get me to come or or, I'm uncomfortable. How do I taste it? If she can just let go into those feelings in the sensation, the moment that happens, you'll feel the girl let go and then she'll come so hard. So that's my advice. And shove your finger up her ass. We should, we should just start a campaign that <laughs> sex is not about orgasms. Sex is about sex. Especially if you feel like she's close to coming, start playing with her asshole. And then when <laughs> she's like really about to come, then you shove your finger <laughs> as far up her asshole as possible. That's my trick. Did you hear a firework go off right when you said that? Hey, that's, <laughs> the neighborhood approves. I feel like that answer is that right in question. Siobhan, you're right. We need to normalize female sexual pleasure. And something that we noticed is that while there's a whole lot of emojis to indicate dicks and butts and fucking, you know, everything from the old pointer finger with the the OK sign sign to an eggplant. Yeah, the eggplant and the water droplets. But there's no sign 
that a girl can send to someone right now that I know of. Yep. That means I want you to eat my pussy. There's no emoji for that. And so we officially propose. And this just started here first. Okay. So don't, you know. It's, July 10th. Is that 2020. Today? July 10th, 2020. Uh, on the Sunday morning orgy podcast. We propose that the Kiwi mm. be used as the official bat signal for women everywhere who want to get their pussies ate. The, the formula is Kiwi sign. Just kiwi sign. Just kiwi sign. Just There's kiwi. no formula. Same way. No. That- that's how much. That's how important we think eating pussy is. Yep. Yeah. If you want to add the tongue to it, fine. That's a little extra. But the truth is, no. I'm talking like, should you put time and place on there as well? No. Oh no. No. I no, mean, it, if, if if you got that, it and means you knew right it was now. for eating pussy. Would you right like now. inquire to when? No, I just, just start roll driving up to the house. Yeah, you just get in the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if I knew where they lived, didn't matter if I had right. pants on. I expect to get so many kiwis. Yeah. In my DMs, in my text messages. We better get some Kiwis. We want some Kiwis. We want some Kiwis. And you know what we actually need now? Kiwi socks. Damn. Yeah, we're going to need some Kiwi socks. Contributing to the sock idea. And you can wear them while <laughs> you're you still get in your the doghouse. <laughs> I know I'm in the doghouse. Oh, you admit it. Remember you yelling at me about not being in the doghouse? I definitely didn't say I'm not in the doghouse. Over was... and over again, you said I'm not in the doghouse. Did I say I'm not in the doghouse? Not on the podcast. This was I... a couple of days ago. <laughs> I don't remember talking about You and about I were on the phone. And I told you you were in the doghouse over the podcast. I'm always in the doghouse about something. So I never know what you're referring to. Michael thinks I'm the most selfish person on the planet. I don't. I do not. I absolutely do not. You're my best friend. I don't think you're that selfish. I just think you don't care about our podcast audience. I he's, do care. He's just trying to iron out the last few wrinkles. Mm. <laughs> anyway, Kiwi socks. You're like a ball sack. I'm like a ball sack? <laughs> when it comes to wrinkles. <laughs> and, and hair. What? I don't have that many wrinkles. As like a human. <laughs> You're trying to like iron out the wrinkles in a shirt. You're like a ball sack. Anyway, <laughs> people. Sock idea. Ball sacks. No, stop giving sock <laughs> ideas. Kiwi. That's where we're at. If you're out there and you're horny and you feel like you want to get your pussy in, send somebody a kiwi. Okay? Send, they- send them a little kiwi emoji. Is it's they- really cute. It's green, which is very inclusive. <laughs> wow. That's good. It's, it's yeah. like not racialized or something. Oh, yeah. okay. I got you. That is, that's true. Kiwis are cute. They taste delicious. I've oh. eaten pussies that taste like uh, kiwi. I've never had a kiwi pussy. That sounds nice. I actually, I've had a mango pussy. That was really good. <sighs> that's my favorite flavor of freeze pop. I'm so curious what mine is, but I also kind of don't want to know. You don't ever tr- taste your pussy? You don't ever like... Well, I mean, I have, but I've never like... And- assigned another taste to it. I don't know. The the thing is, you can't really do it just by yourself. You have to, once you start eating a lot of pussy. Uh, right, you can, you you get like, you have a more distinguished palate about like it. Like There's yes. a strawberry pussy. Yeah. There's mango pussy. There's beef jerky pussy. Potato pussy. Yeah. Yeah. Various kinds of sashimi. And that's okay. Ooh, sashimi. So, please. Kiwi emoji. Start sending those kiwi emojis and get those pussies ate, girl. All right, our next write-in. So, our next uh, listener mail came from my good friend Richard. Richard! Richard! We used to call him Rizzard. Rizzard. Anyway, so, uh, Richard wrote in, and he said, Out of the six or seven girls I've slept with, 3.5 have been virgins. And I don't know if that is referring to a midget. (laughs) Maybe she's a half virgin, like she's sucked dick, but she hasn't had penetrative... Penetrative? Pen- well, what's the official? Penetrative? Uh, how small does a dick have to be? That, oh, is that what it means? That you had sex with it and it you're still a virgin. It doesn't count. Oh, oh God. That's a, I don't know. Okay. Out of the six or seven girls I've slept with, 3.5 have been virgins. So obviously there's a lot of emotional connection for these girls because I'm their first. What I find is that after the relationship is over, they still come through and still want to hang. And there's a lot of great sex that comes out of it. I guess my question is how much... Is that the emotional manipulation of them wanting to be together? Or do I actually have a desirable dick? Wow, that's a lot to unpack. Fascinating. Fascinating question. I don't think he's wrong about the connection thing. I don't necessarily attribute it to wanting a relationship. Maybe some of them do. I think we would need to know more information. But what I'm not surprised by is that once you form a connection that feels kind of intimate, it can be easy to do that later on. In addition, probably they like your dick. Yeah. I mean, if they didn't, 
He said it's great sex. That's probably why they're coming back. Well, I definitely agree with you. There's that emotional connection that happens, and so they're just coming back. But also, I think it's your dick. I think you got a magic dick, Richard. So Rachel thinks it's your dick, but Rachel also thinks that Doug doesn't have a secret girlfriend. So just bear that in mind. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Mm-hmm. The real thing that we should talk about that's connected to all this stuff, Richard, is if you have a really great dick, It is really hard to discern whether a girl is in it for your dick or in it for your heart. It's just, I I always think of my ex whenever we get into this conversation. Why, Rachel? Because he tried to clarify that. Clarify what? Whether or not I was into him for his dick or his heart. Right. For a long time. What did you say? Dick. Did you tell him that? No, I didn't say it like that. But he did one time, if I recall, ask you, is it okay if we don't have sex tonight yep and you said what no (laughs) (laughs) it's a real true story (laughs) what has this episode been it's really been a a roller coaster i don't know if this episode is good it is good we're just emotionally catching up with each other (laughs) oh that's so cute what because you guys have been distanced from each other i don't even care now your spirit you don't care no uh, about the distance? Well, I care about the audience, which is why I didn't leave. That's why I was here working on the socks. Working on the socks because I left him for five days. When I leave Jesus Michael, Christ. he loses his fucking mind. He loses it. And it's so... And this is why he's been he's been yelling at me and screaming at me. Because... He can't handle when I go. He, he treats me. He, he treats me in this insane way where it seems like it's like you're listening to this and you're going, man. He's like yelling a lot. It's just so much anger for for his abandonment issues that he has with me in particular, where he knows I haven't. I'm not angry about anything. I haven't been angry all night. You are. I can feel it. I can feel it coming off of you. The only people who are disappointed in you are the audience, everyone listening, and your mother. Well, that doesn't upset me at all because I already know she's disappointed in me. You can't use them all against dis- me. But you're disappointing the audience. You're just upset My that point I left. is you just don't care about our audience enough to do something interesting for the show. To be fair, based on our sock sales right now, all of us have zero. Yeah. You don't even have the sock sales up. So you don't... So that's bullshit. <laughs> Dude, I have a butt plug in right now that, that vibrates <laughs> every time someone buys a pair of socks. Should we have Kiwi butt plugs? No. The Kiwi is for the pussy. That could be some good merch. The Kiwi is for plug. pussy eating. Maybe a bib. okay people so i don't know what the fuck we've been talking about but uh can we let's wrap this fucking episode up i feel like we've gotten nothing done we didn't talk to anyone we didn't talk to the special mystery guest on the phone who was gonna haunt my fucking dreams because they didn't answer and i don't know why uh you know rachel doesn't care about you there's i mean just to sum things up we might just have to turn this into a just sock business yeah Listen, buy our fucking socks. Okay, let's <laughs> housekeeping. What do we need to talk about to All wrap right. up this fucking episode? All right, like big and deal, you guys. You have to, if you like this shit, which we know you do, you need to be rating and reviewing and subscribing. Apple, iTunes, those are the big ones. Just, just say that you like it and give us five stars. It's really iTunes. nice and important. YouTube, YouTube Spotify, Spotify. Please, no, for real. Yeah, Pornhub. it really helps us uh, if you rate. If you like, uh, leave comments, become subscribers, and hit that bell so that you're notified with every new podcast that's going to come out. Hit up our Spotify, subscribe there. Uh, You can rate us. You can also leave comments and rate us on uh, Apple and iTunes. And buy our fucking socks. Buy some buy of, the socks. Buy, buy some of my the socks, socks, please. Buy some Rachel socks so I can stay. <laughs> if you like Rachel, buy the socks. But it'll be funny if we kick her off. It's, That's it. And That's write, it. And write in. We really want to answer your question. We like talking about your problems. For God's sakes. We asked you so many times. Write in. Write in to us. I don't care what it's about. Tell Rachel that she... That Doug still has a girlfriend. Tell uh, Andrew that you're planning on buying some of his socks. Confront me <laughs> about about you know yelling at Rachel too much. Uh, whatever it is, you we know. We want to hear from you. We want to hear from you. Yeah. We want to know who's listening. We're cute. We're we lonely. love you. And if you 
go to our Twitter, find uh, Richard Cesera's uh, oh phone God. number, which is Rachel's dad, and um, and get ready because uh, I have a feeling that next week we were probably we're probably going to be able to talk to uh, that the person secret who, guest. who the secret guest who knows Doug. Uh, uh, we love uh, you. Bye. Sun.